Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. Now, there's a man that I've been dying to meet, no pun intended, as we share some fabulous mutual friends. The friends we share are physical medium Scott Milligan and the great gentlemen that own Banyan Retreat in the UK, which is Nick Whittem and Stephen Sue. Sid is creating a Banyan type retreat here in the United States that you need to know about. It's going to be held in New Orleans, Louisiana, April 19th through 22nd, 2019, called Touching Eternity, complete with evidential mediumship and trance mediumship by Eileen Davies. There's a seance with physical medium Scott Milligan, and of course, he does trance demonstrations as well. And what makes this event different from my events, which are We Don't Die Boston that just happened and We Don't Die Orlando coming up, is you really get quality time with these two tutors. And so it's going to be extraordinary. Sid is a psychic medium. And I have this sneaky suspicion, even though I'm just meeting him today, we are going to be great friends and Sid will be part of the We Don't Die Radio community. It is clear to me that Sid makes his life about caring for others and serving both people living and those in the spirit world. His website is sid-patrick.com. And this event is uh, t- Touching Eternity, which is sid-patrick.com forward slash Touching Eternity. Sid Patrick, my new friend, welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Hi, Sandra. I'm very glad to be your new friend. I think so. <laughs> yeah, just because we both share the love for the same people in the spirit yes. world. And I just thought, who is this guy? I need to talk to him. So I'm glad <laughs> today's the day. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, so you're in New Orleans in that area now? Always yes. live there? Uh, not always. Post-Katrina, I did move to Dallas for nine years. Oh, wow. And then came back when I opened my center. In, my center opened in 2013, and then I came back 2014. So for a year, I was flying back and forth from Dallas to New oh, Orleans wow. every week. Well, I'm excited to delve in and find out about your center and find out a little bit more about you. But can you talk a little bit about your past and how you got into this wonderful world of being interested in the afterlife and mediumship? Sure. So, well, you know, my family, I, I, my family um, is a little bit in, has intuitive sides, like like a lot of uh, psychics and mediums, their families have intuitive sides. Uh, though my family never recognized it as intuition. My father is an empath, and he thinks it's a disease. So I think that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> he thinks it's an illness. Uh, he's never come to terms with it. And uh, we had a relative that read. So I started reading at a very early age, probably around thirteen or fourteen, when I started reading, um, and have probably held a client, started building a clientele when I was in my twenties. And that's all I did was psychic work for a while. And like most mediums, what pulled me into mediumship was the death of my mother. And I find that very common that um, people uh, who lose loved ones go on this journey to seek about life, you know, after death. And so, yes. So it was the death of my mother that catapulted me into the mediumship. And that was in 1988. And with that, I started studying with some local people. if you see, it's all on my website. There's um, Louise Decker and Tom Clark. Tom Clark was the uh, psychic teacher at the university here, actually. And he was studying at the spiritualist camp Chesterfield for a while. And he actually was a tutor there. And so he started mentoring me here. And um, in the 90s, I went up to Chesterfield and had some of my first experiences with phenomena and the spirit world. And uh, it was an amazing um experience, some of the things that I had experienced studying at that camp. And then um, Katrina, then I came back. Um, I'm a nurse. So that's what you mean. I I help the living and so I run a hospital locally here. Great. (laughs) And so I work with a lot of patients and a lot of nurses and helping them care for others. And I am known at the hospital because um, I have been known to push the code cart to a room before um, someone passes and that freaks them out. Say that again. What do you mean? Like, okay, so I can go into a room and if I see the spirit lying over the body, mm-hmm. I know they're about to code. So I pull the code cart to the room. 
So I know that. And then the patient codes after the code cart's there. So they actually don't flatline until after I have the code cart to the room. And that oh. kind of, so everybody at work knows what I do because of that. <laughs> and um, so it's, uh, so everyone knows you know, that I have a metaphysical shop and that I am a medium. It's no secret. And it actually comes in handy sometimes in the work that I do in the hospital because I'm able to sit with people who don't have family and help them cross and talk to them and make sure they don't pass alone, as well as I'm able to tell about when that time is going to be by watching how the energy flows in the room. Thank you Um, for doing that. I just thought how comforting well, on the flip side, there many do pe- people do pass alone, and just to have someone there with them that cares. Oh, I never let we never we never let anyone pass alone in our hospital. We Thank always you. make sure they have somebody with them, and uh, you know, because uh, so, we have a lot of elderly people who have no family, you know, or their family is in another state or somewhere else. So we. I have a group of nurses and I or them will sit with a patient continuously as they're starting to pass. And we can usually tell by, you know, watching the vital signs and stuff where they're heading. And, um, and I can also tell by where the energy is placed in the room. So I can actually see that. So I can usually tell you usually within five to 10 minutes of when they're going to pass by that. Um, And that's just something I've picked up over the years of seeing energy and watching patients and so that's a very uh, unique thing that I do. And um, But with all that said, um, my journey after my mom passed and going to Chesterfield, um, after while I was in Texas post-Katrina, I started studying more of mediumship. I started getting more away from the, um, using cards when I read to just reading people intuitively. Um, wanted to learn more about mediumship, heard about Arthur Finley, dashed over to Arthur Finley, I was able to be uh, mentored by the wonderful Glenn Edwards, who is phenomenal. Yes, best, Um, one of the best of the best. Yes, he was my mentor while I was there. And this is kind of funny, Sandra. He, I was, we were in a class, we were doing an exercise. And what we were doing was we were doing what they call an energy circle sharing our energy amongst the circle and Glenn put us down like in a in like a hypnotic state not a hypnotic but more of a, a trance state and had us exchanging energy and he wanted people to see if they would speak and people were speaking about love and peace and you know worldly things and I don't know why but out of my mouth comes this conversation of these two gentlemen that I had no clue who they were and it was all I can remember, something about flowers being on the bed. And everybody sort of like looked at me in shock when I said it because it wasn't about love, peace and those things. Glenn walked over to me and put his hand on my shoulder and said, Mr. Patrick, you're going to be a physical medium. And I'm like, OK, what's a physical medium? You know, at that point, I right. knew what a medium was, but I had no idea what a physical medium was, mm-hmm. which uh, which was uh, really um, way out of my league. So one of the travelers I was with comes run over to goes, you know, Sid, if, if Glenn Edwards told you you're going to be a physical medium, because that's like Jesus coming off the cross and telling you you're going to be saved. And I'm just like, I'm like, well, I don't know. What is a physical medium? Just right, tell me. Right. And I had no idea. So, so Glenn had us, um, you know, he had me sit in an auditorium. He was going to use Gordon Higginson's cabinet, but Scott had actually taken it to do another venue. So he, instead he put me in front of, um, a hundred students um, in an auditorium in a chair, and he talked me down. Oh my gosh! And as he talked me down, I saw one of my guides, who never speaks, but he always communicates with me to, through telepathy. And he, I seen him step over me, and he's this—he's like an Asian man with a long, long beard. And I seen him step over me because I was looking at myself from behind, and I seen him wave to the audience. And so then Glenn brought me back up and he says, okay, audience, tell Mr. Patrick what you saw. And they said, we saw this guy with a long beard said over you. Then he waved at us. And so for me, that was validation, validation, a a phenomenal validation Mm -hmm. and has since put me on my journey into physical mediumship. That's when I realized what it was all about. And and what's really odd is that we were at Banyan um, this last November, and Scott had me in the cabinet 
And Scott didn't, doesn't know that story because he wasn't there. He had left to go do a seance. And so I was sitting in the cabinet again, and that guy came out, and he walked to the center of the room, and then he nodded at everybody in the room. And then when the exercise was done, Scott said, all that I saw was this Asian man with a long beard walk, out of, walk to the center of the room, and he nodded at everybody. Again, a great validation for me. Sid, I think I think it's important because some people, this might be their very first episode of We Don't Die Radio, and they're mm-hmm. thinking, what the heck is physical mediumship? Would you mind talking just a little bit about what it is? Sure. So physical, so th- what's the difference between mental and physical? Mental mediumship is when, you know, there's a medium who channels a, channels a, channels a spirit person and is able to give validations of their existence. And physical mediumship is when phenomena occurs that is witnessed by others. So, um, so physical mediumship is many, it ranges from many things. Some of the, the simplest form probably of physical mediumship is what they would make consider like table tipping, which is very, e- it's very easy to do. It's very simple. It's, it, it's just, it's, it is physical medium Two phenomena such as apportations and deportations. Those are things that fall fall out of nowhere, appear out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's materializations, like with the overshadowing. That's called overshadowing. What my guide did was overshadowed me. So for your readers, for your listeners out there, I'd say, folks, please, this is not possession. This is overshadowing. Right. <laughs> because a lot of people freak out about that. But it's, it's, it's an overshadowing of energy is all that it is. It's not, it was not transfiguration, which is when the ecto, Ectoplasm is a substance that's created by the medium. So it's so it's not transfiguration where the ecto actually changes the feature of the medium. So that's that's transfiguration. This is just overshadowing. So it's an overshadowing of the energy that other people that can be seen with the naked eye. And so physical mediumship is about phenomena. It's when that a phenomena can occur that can validate that there's life beyond this life. And so it's like the joining of the two worlds is how I put it. Yeah. So that's what mediumship is. What and are, I, there's many forms of it. I mean, we could talk about um, this, you know, there's apportation, there's, uh, there's physical movement, there's creation of ectoplasm, which is, phys- which is a physical substance. But there's also energetic ectoplasm, which, because energy can move things in a room as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I've seen that um, several times um, where the energy has moved stuff. Um, I've had some phenomena. I don't. I do not at this time produce it consistently, like on demand. But a lot of my events, we have phenomena. Um, we did an event at this uh, theater, and um, I was doing an event with Trini Simmons. She's a medium from from Colorado who now is in, lives in New Orleans and Colorado. And we were reading one family, and both families could take the evidence. But this one family, you know, you get those families that just can't let you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we're trying to get to the other family. And this family wouldn't let us go. So the spirit person of the other family spoke out loud and said, my God, and then knocked over the stuff of the family we were reading and left. And the whole audience witnessed it. The entire audience heard the spirit speak. That's called direct voice. Go, my God, in his English accent, because he was an English fellow. And he belonged to the other family. <laughs> so I found that quite amazing. Um, at a recent event, we just had um, someone whose son had been killed, even stabbed, murdered, and stabbed in the heart. And the whole time we read them, you heard the heartbeat over the mic. And we thought it was a mic error. Mm-hmm. So we turned the mics off and turned them back on. And there was nothing. But the minute his name was mentioned, the heartbeat started again. So it was just, just great phenomena. For me, Sid, I've, um, you know, the subtitle of my book is A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. When I first heard about physical mediumship, it was just like, no, come on. (laughs) And then using the word seance, using the word ectoplasm, I thought, oh, this is too far out. And a lot of these, most of these seances that we're able to attend, which are extremely rare, there's only a couple individuals in the entire world that do this, but you sit in the dark. Uh, the medium is sitting in what's called a, a cabinet, and it's yeah. just a frame, but it's got black cloth around it to build up the energy. And then what happens is 
you know, it's like I said, it's in the dark because this this vapor or whatever ectoplasm is exudes from the the pores or um, the mouth or the yeah, nostrils, yes. whatever of the medium. And so this is really hard for the brain to get around because it seems like it's so far out. And then the loved one and their etheric body, they can step into it. They can speak again, or they can touch things and ring bells and bang drums and, and lift things. And if it, if this is your first episode, I have several episodes with about physical mediumship with Scott Milligan on this because he's big on the history of physical mediumship. But Sid, it wasn't until I read a book and it's it was by Peter Aykroyd, who's Dan Aykroyd's father. Now, Dan Aykroyd wrote the movie, starred in the movie Ghostbusters. They come from a line of spiritualists that would practice and have these seances and witness these ectoplasmic people and the reconnections of loved ones. So young Dan Aykroyd actually grew up in a household hearing about granddad and all these seances. So he, when he went to create the movie Ghostbusters, he used use the word he was very familiar with, ectoplasm. So it's not the green slimy stuff. Nope. It's real. And just this past yep. we- weekend in Boston, I held an event called We Don't Die Boston, had a bunch of speakers all about the afterlife. And Scott Milligan did three of these seances. And people came, we sat in the dark, we sang songs to build up the energy. And a lot of things did move around the room. There's things with the glow in the dark tape and things on them. And that's all interesting. But what's really interesting is when the loved ones start speaking back to their people still on earth. And it might be just one, it might be two people. It doesn't have, you know, it's not often a lot because it takes a lot of energy, but with such clear communication and evidence that that child is again, talking to their parent, it really, like you said, gives us the evidence that life after death is real. And I was a junkie for going to this Banyan retreat every year. Every time they had one of these great <laughs> events, Voices of the Past and Whispers of the Soul. And I could sit there and learn from Eileen Davies and, and go to the seances with Scott Milligan. And it changed my life. And I thought somehow, someday, I want to get them to the United States. And yes. while my events are generally about the afterlife with many speakers, you are bringing the Banyan retreat experience to the United States. And for our listeners who've been interested in, and have asked me a thousand times, why can't something like this be done in the United States? Well, it is. And if you have even a teeny bit of interest, this is a very big deal, this New Orleans event. And it's the best of the best, Eileen Davies and Scott Milligan. And um, I, Sid, I thank you for doing this because, oh, my alarm clock's going off. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but I really do thank you for doing this and um, bringing something so extraordinary for the very first time here to the United States. I'm very excited about it. I'm very, very excited. And I can tell you, I've had phenomenal experiences. One, I will tell you my best experience in a seance room, one of the best. I was sitting in seance and I was able to be, they have a position called the checker. And these are the people that go around and make sure that everything is, you know, status quo. We check the medium, we check the doors, we make sure we check, make sure everything is locked. We make sure there's nothing that can interfere with the experimentation of the visit with spirit. And I was sitting, so I was sitting very close to the cabinet. And in this experience, we were singing. And all of a sudden, I felt this child's hand crawling up my leg. And I know that freaks some people out. But when you're at a seance, you have to be open to experience anything. And of course, it's in the dark. So I feel this little hand crawling up my leg. And then it goes from my leg to the lady sitting next to me. And it was her child. And she was able to hold her child's hand. And then the, when she did hold this, the child's hand, the child spoke to her. So she wow. got to have a conversation with her child at this seance. And it was phenomenal. The, it was totally phenomenal. And, and me, I, I was fortunate enough to be sitting next to her. So I got to feel his little hand crawling up my leg and then moving over to her. Mm. And so that was a very unique experience. And it was... Um, he was about seven years old, so it was a small child's hand. 
But for most people, that might, might scare them. But I tell them, don't be scared. This is a seance. You're very safe. Um, seances are very safe. They're done with extreme caution and extreme protection for everyone present. And um, you, but you will get to experience some truly phenomenal things. And when I said when that child's hands started calling at my leg, I was like, "Oh my, I'm being touched!" <laughs> and all of a sudden, then it moved over to the lady next to me, and it was her child. And it was an amazing gift for her to be able to hold that child's hand again and speak to her child, you know, in his voice. I so I have. Really- two experiences that are on my top two, I think. And one of them, I mean, I've been maybe a dozen times to these seances and certainly while things seem to levitate and move around and musical instruments all get played at the same time, the real magic is when a parent gets reunited with their child or a husband gets reunited with their wife and they get to speak again. But I remember there's this glow in the dark plaque and a little yes. spirit yes. girl was holding on the plaque and you could see her fingers moving and there was no children in this room and she was presenting it to everyone. And that was sweet. But my very first seance with Scott Milligan, it was just before Christmas and there was a little artificial Christmas tree in the center of the room and around it, there must've been three or four dozen Christmas presents all wrapped up in Christmas paper. And so we started singing Christmas carols to build up the energy. And then you hear a voice, which is uh, Daniel, who, who speaks through Scott saying, oh, the children have arrived. And Sid, all at the same time, all the presents got unwrapped. So I, there must have been a couple dozen children in that room. And then all of a sudden, the toy car starts moving on the floor balls are going around stuffed animals are moving hula hoops floating around there's whistles being blown a toy piano being um, played um, a drum being beaten all at the same time and then just a little while later they turned on the red light and of course not only was there paper all over the place, like as in any Christmas morning, but the Christmas tree was actually lifted and moved outside of the circle. And that just kind of pulled me into, there's something going on here. Now, the brain is not going to be able to justify this, but to sit there and experience it and then experience communication from loved ones, that's so specific. And there's no saying how any seance will go. They're all experimental but they yes. are real. Now, I can't say that every physical medium who's in the world right now practicing is the real deal, but you and I know clear that Scott Milligan is one of them. And Absolutely. he, you know, a lot of people bash him and say he's a phony. And you know what? We don't pay attention to that because I know how many people have gotten reunited. And uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I, I, it's not only is he a, a great physical man, but he's a wonderful teacher. Yes, I yes. tell you, everyone I take to see him, you know, in the UK, they come back from a place of believing to knowing mm-hmm. because he's such he's so authentic in the way he teaches and the way he expresses. And Eileen is so loving with, her, with the way. She just comes across as like this loving mom to her people she teaches. And, you know, she's just wonderful with helping them get to that next level. And so, you know, this is this is why I'm so thrilled to have them here in New Orleans. Um, I've been trying to get this together for years. I actually went to a the event that I went to in Brighton was actually was actually a physical mediumship convention. So all the physical like, like Stuart Alexander was there. Wow. All the physicals were there. And Scott did a seance there, which was really amazing, was the cap. So we were in an auditorium, and the cabinet was against a stage, and there was all these chairs on the stage. Well, towards the end of the seance, within minutes, the cabinet flew over our heads because we could feel the curtain hit us and went to the center of the room. And within seconds, every chair that was on that stage was circled around that cabinet building all the way around it and closing it with Scott thrown out of the cabinet on the floor in front of it, knocked out. And the, the, when, when the lights came up and everybody started freaking out, the, the physical mediums wasn't sure whether he teleported or did he, you know, disappear and then reappear. And um, it, he definitely teleported because we actually felt the cabinet go over us. So we know that it had floated in the air 
and landed over in that side of the room. And all the chairs from on the stage was amazing. There was a, there was a movie, what was it, Poltergeist, that scene mm-hmm, in the kitchen mm-hmm. with a chair stacked on the table. Right, right. It was just like that. Those chairs were stacked perfectly around the cabinet within seconds. It's crazy what happens. And yes. and I think you and I both know with our conversation right now, we can't convince anybody of anything, oh, no. nor would we try no. because it is happening in the dark. And, you know, and but this ectoplasm is a part of the makeup of a human right. being, which is Scott. And although there used to be physical mediums that could do things in dim light and people could see their loved ones, Scott has not yet progressed to that. Uh, and who knows? It's all in the spirit world's hands, how his progression goes. Yes. But, you know, the, but light will hurt this ectoplasm. And I don't know if you know this story, but just the week before last, Scott was in Scotland. And accidentally, when the music was to be turned off, a light went on instead. The person hit the wrong switch. And everybody in the seance could see the ectoplasmic rod coming from the cabinet over to a trumpet that was floating in midair and then it retreated back into the cabinet well scott was left with like the look of black eyes under his eyes and a burn mark on his cheek and what he describes is a hundred times worse than the worst hangover he's ever felt because it really does impact his body another time someone did something accidental and threw something into the center of the room, which ended up hitting this ectoplasm, it ricocheted into his body, and there was a huge burn on Scott's belly. So it's something yes. to be respected, something to be taken seriously. Yes. And, you know, that's why we hold hands when the ectoplasm is out, is just for the safety of the medium. But I tell you, folks, who's ever listening right now, if this plants a little seed to something you, you'd want to find out more about, Sid's doing this event, and then I'm also going to be doing an event in Orlando, We Don't Die Orlando.com, which will be in March, and then in April. Uh, for those that really want to get more, um, this, this event in New Orleans. And let's talk about Eileen Davies. Are you going to have both Scott and Eileen do their trance demonstrations as oh, well? Absolutely, because Eileen's wonderful. Yes, yes, she is. She is. I've been studying with Eileen too since like the, so the class that I first took at Arthur Finley, Scott, Eileen and Glenn were all there. I mean, they were all part of that. It seemed like I followed those. Whenever I went to a physical event, there was always Glenn, Scott and Eileen there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just been a wonderful journey for myself. And I'm I'm so glad I feel so blessed to have been able to experience them. Um, They're just, there's absolutely fabulous instructors like i said they're not just good trance mediums and good physical mediums they're per- they're very personal they are very loving they care about helping you get to that next level they help you get into that altered state they work with you scott will have you sit in the cabinet and do cabinet work he will have you um he will work with you in obtaining that that deeper connection because what I do want to share with your listeners is that you know yes most physical séances are done in the dark but phenomena does happen in the light. It can happen in the light. And I tell people, the more you open your heart up to the spirit world, they will show you things. And it's not all. I've had many apportations in the, in the light. You know, um, can you give us the, an example? Because that sounds very interesting. Yes. Okay. So one hospital I was working in Texas, a manager, we were at a party together and the manager, um, went home that night and she passed. She was very young. She was 50. She had two daughters. But all this phenomena started happening on her unit. Well, one night I was rounding and I was talking to a nurse on her unit about about FMLA because she was having, she was suffering with migraine headaches. So we were talking about how to get her onto FMLA um, to help her, you know, remain working and stuff as a nurse. And while I'm talking to her, something fell right between us. And we're in a, on a unit lit up. Something fell right in between us. And I looked at her and I said, Did somebody just throw something at me? She said, No. I said, Is was there something on the counter on the desk that might have fallen? She said, No. I said, You did see that, right? She said, Yeah. She goes, Sid, you're scaring me. I said, Well, let's see. So I looked down, and there was this little pin that said, Santa loves me. Now, this is like this was like an 
like in March or April when this happened. And I'm like, why Santa loves me? Is this, where does this pen come from? And then I just didn't dawn on me at first, but I said, you know, it's probably a message from the manager who lived here. I mean, who worked here at this, at this facility. And so at that time we were going on an adventure to do a paranormal investigation in Jefferson, Texas, which was about an hour's drive from, from where I was. And, um, I get a phone call and it's the daughter of the manager. And she says, Sid, my mom used to take us to Jefferson, Texas. We were kids to do all the ghost tour and have all the fun. So do you mind if we come along with your group? I said, no, you and your sister come along. So when they, we, we got together there, I brought the pen and I said, this fell on your mom's unit. And she looked at me and her eyes wide. And she goes, that's my mom's pen. Where'd you get it? I said, I just owe you. It came out of nowhere on the unit. Wow. And she says, that's my mother's pen. And I said, yeah, but why? And as I say the word, Santa loves me, it occurred to me that the daughter's names were Sarah, Laura, mother. This mother sent me this message that these children were going to come on this journey with me. And I found that totally amazing. And that was done in broad, in broad light and, mm-hmm. and the room lit up. And I have that, well, actually that pen, you can see a picture of it in my book, Seance Experiments. Oh, I don't um, know about your book. That's another thing well, we get to talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have Ooh. a book, Seance Experiments, which talks a lot about when I opened the center. And um, the book is co-authored with Kalila Smith, who is a local writer here. And she's also a, par- a researcher of the spirit world and a paranormal researcher. And um, so she co-wrote the book because... Um, not knowing who she was, I did a reading for her when her when her daughter had passed, and her daughter is so powerful. She has brought so many experiences to us, um, and has communicated with her mom um, at my center. So the book Seance Experiments is about our journey together, investigating this stuff. And she's been to been to England with me to see Scott and stuff. So it's just all the different things that we've been looking at and doing um, with with the um, unseen world. So. It's 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 a book that just talks about different phenomena that's been experienced. So I tell people, and I tell your listeners, you know, when you open your heart up to spirit, you will spirit will never scare you. They don't mean no. to scare you. They what they will if you open your heart and you open your faith to them, they will show you things such as a ports. I was in um, Stansted and <laughs> and I was a bad kid, so I'm gonna get that out right now. I was a bad kid when I was okay. little. Okay, well, so, <laughs> we all have little things. <laughs> I, I was always in trouble. Okay. I was always in trouble. I always did. I was very mischievous. And so my mom used to always blame me for her bursitis on her left shoulder. Well, this girl who's not even a medium, she's a healer. She was just came to all the family to experience it. And she says, Sid, I feel like I got your mom, but she's hurting my shoulder. And I looked at her and I said, really? I said, okay. And so she says, yeah, my shoulder. And then it dawned on me about my mom's bursitis. I said, well, my mom had bursitis. She had said, it's really hurting me. Tell her, let it go. And as I said, mom, let it go a black and white image of my mother's face went right over hers and the pain went away. So I tell, I tell people, you know, open your heart to Mm -hmm. the spirit and have faith, have no expectation and just allow whatever happens to happen. And the spirit will show you things. They will, they will bring experiences to you. Mm -hmm. They will. I've seen it way too many times. We were doing a seance in Louisville and nothing happened. So we were all bummed out. And I got a phone call from a girl in New I was in Louisville, Texas. She was in New Orleans and she's my business partner. And she called me, she says, what are you doing? I said, I'm just finishing a seance that nothing happened at. <laughs> she says, I thought you were doing something. And she took a picture of this Buddha that was on her floor and just appeared on her floor. She was in a room researching jewelry and she heard a crash and she went in there and, it was, and she found this Buddha on her floor. It's a little green Buddha. Well, come to find out that Buddha was missing from the store we were having the seance at. <laughs> That's you funny. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. I'm telling you, it's just phenomenal. Scott has you- <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of stories. The 23 years yes. he's been doing physical mediumship. And just, I know my listeners who've heard this before have heard me say this, but not only is the, he the real deal, but he's the only teaching physical medium and he's got 23 years of experience and they're all experimental. So you just never know what's going to happen, but stuff happens, stuff happens. Yes. Um, yes. But it's not as, like I said, as great as it is to 
realize we're all holding hands and there's no possible way all these Christmas presents can be unwrapped at the same time. That phenomena is great, but get a father talking to his daughter again or a child talking to their parent again because we all know the pain of grief and i think that's probably why you're why you're in this business as well is to help mend the grieving hearts yes and i do many i do many events like that we just finished a relay for life for cancer event um, this weekend excellent what was that what's what is what was that about it's called Relay for Life. It's mm-hmm. a it's a support group for cancer, and they raise money for the Cancer Foundation. And Excellent. so we just did a mediumship group for them. Yeah, mediumship's so important. And you take someone like Eileen Davies, and I and although I haven't interviewed her yet, I do know her well, and she I think is one of the best of the best. I mean, I I've seen her demonstrate, and you will too if you attend this New Orleans event. But with street names and, I mean, just so much detailed information brought in with love and humor. And you sit there like, how the heck is she getting all this stuff? And even if you're not a medium or if you're, you are a medium, she does exercises at these, this event that you can try your hand at mediumship, even if you hadn't before. And Sid, when I was at Banyan... I was a little nervous because I've taken a course here and there on mediumship, but all of a sudden when you think, oh, I've got to be the medium now, how's it going to go? And she says, all you need to do is love the person that is in front of you. Just generate love and and be open for the spirit world to put whether images or feelings or whatever in your mind. And it was it, it just so sweet some of the things that happened and they came out of my mouth and they came out of my, what seemed like my imagination, but they were very detailed memories that the spirit person was sharing through me with the recipient and it came out of love. So if, if attendees are willing to be open, I do believe we are souls having a human experience and it is our divine right to be able to tap into some of our soul power. And and once you get a feeling for this, you realize, wow, I'm not just this body. Um, there is a bigger picture. Life after death is real because there's, there's no way you can know these things. <laughs> just, there's no way. It, but it, 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 and I'd like you to talk about this a little bit too, is once you realize that the afterlife is real, do you believe that life becomes more What's the word um, I'm looking for? Um, important, valuable. Yes. Like you live yes. a different kind of life. Yes, it's very fulfilling. And, That's a good um, word. And the I can say I, you I become emotionally open with my heart, and you really start putting matters of the heart first, and you find out what re- what really is important to you. You know, and it's. I, I just get the, it's fulfilling. It's it just brings an inner peace um, and and a calmness. You know, uh, I'm just I love working with the spirit world. And you know, in every session I do, I always tell people I'm here to work for the spirit. So it's it's whatever it is, you know. And uh, I, I just you know I, I'm very strong on ethics. And when I do mentor people, I do mentor them in ethics. You know, so and I just tell them be op- open your heart. But in order for you to open your heart, you do have to get rid of some things sometimes that hold you back. And that's what the hardest thing for most people is because you really have to go in introspectively and look at, you know, how do I open my heart to this new, to this, this new world? You know, what, do, what, are my, what are my physical things that are holding me back? What do I need to let go of? And the more you let go of some of the pain or some of the confusion or whatever is going on in your life, the more open your heart becomes and the easier – it is for that spirit energy to flow through you. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I tell people, I teach people that all the time is just like, like Eileen said, put your heart into it, right. love the person in front of you. And, 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 and when you feel that love, everything else will just fall right in place. It's amazing how love is that mm-hmm. powerful energy. And you teach a bunch of classes too. If people are interested in mediumship or private mentorship, mm-hmm. they can, yes. Start yes, with I you. Have, yes, I have a center here um, in New Orleans it's called the Metaphysical Resource Center. Lovely. There we host we host classes there. Um, I'm not the only 
you know, person who teaches there, but I do host, I do teach the mediumship classes there as well as some psychic numerology. Um, I teach tarot there and a few other things, um, at the center. Um, we have, I have a, lot, a huge following, and that's another reason why I'm trying to bring two just through. Because one of the things I preach is, you know, in order to get a fulfilled, rounded uh, experience in mediumship, you have to study and you have to go take from other people because you're going to get a pearl from this one, a pearl from that one, a pearl from this one. So I, I encourage people to study. I encourage them to journey. I encourage them to read because that that's how you open that heart is getting that understanding, getting that vibe, and just, just getting that feeling from other tutors. And so I, I definitely, you know, promote that 100%. Mm, I like that about you. And, you know, I'm feeling the same way about uh, just education and giving people the well-rounded experience. And it's not as easy as just taking a weekend course and calling yourself a medium. I mean, it really takes time. It takes good people. It takes seeing Oh, absolutely. I, I started studying in 1988. Mm -hmm. I didn't come out as a medium to after 2010. So, I mean, look at all the years I studied in there. I mean, just, you know, it's it, it wasn't, you know, like I took a course or two and then said, hey, I'm a teacher or hey, I'm a medium. No, right. it's been a journey. It is a journey. And um, I, I encourage people, never stop journeying. Even as a teacher, you should go listen to other people's talks or go sure you can. watch other people work so that you can feel that energy. You get to learn. By doing that, you learn to feel the presence of the spirit. You learn mm -hmm. to know when the spirit is there and when it's not. Mm -hmm. Because there's sometimes it's not there. But and you can definitely feel when it steps in. And that comes from just being exposed to it and, and going to things and watching other mediums work and taking a class and or maybe going to do a workshop or going to an event, you know, like like the one you're doing in Orlando and mm -hmm. and and, and uh, Boston is, you know, people need to get out and experience this. And New Orleans, you know, the reason, like I said, it's um, we have a very high economy here. So it's hard for a lot of our, our the people that I mentor to get to England. You know, because the airfare alone is is expensive and not everybody can do that. So it's great to have these people coming here and teaching throughout. And I, I love all the places that teach. And I try to journey with my group to these different places when time allows. Mm -hmm. And it's important, I think, to train with some of the best of the best. I yes. went through a mediumship class back in 2002 or 2005 just to see if there was any even reality towards evidential mediumship because I was on that journey of skeptic to believer. And I took a three-day course, and yes, I was accurate a few times telling people their deceased loved ones, which rocked my world because I couldn't believe this information was coming out of me. Not always. But the unfortunate thing happened is this woman gave me a certificate that I'm now a certified medium, go charge $200 an hour and work with people. And I thought, eh, I'm not going to do that. But there's, there's a lot of people out there that, and I hate to say this, but can give mediumship a bad name or take away some of its credibility because they aren't trained, they haven't sat, they haven't experienced. And so I love that you teach and even your own ethics are fantastic. So, you know, I, I'm really a stand for mediumship of the future, um, really having more ethics. And so when people will know who's, who's good, who they can count on. When we work too early, we give um, some of those negative promoters of mediumship power. And I'm um, actually just put a rant on Facebook about that, but I won't go into detail about that. <laughs> you know, uh, we, but we do when we when we work um, when we work in not the most ethical way. It gives it gives the people who don't believe in me, the skeptic, more power, and 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 I feel that that's a disservice to the spirit world right. because we definitely. I mean, I, I there will always be skeptics, mm -hmm. and I, and 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 I. You know, I'm okay with that. That is an okay thing. I mean, there needs to be skeptics because that's what keeps us in line. <laughs> you know, and everyone's not going to follow this path. You have to choose this path. And it's a choice. And like I said, unfortunately for most, it's usually a death of a loved one or some trauma that brings you to this path, unfortunately. 
you know, I, I wish more people would just say, hey, let's see what this is about and not have to go through the trauma or <laughs> or, the, or the death of a loved one to this path. But um, I definitely believe in ethics and, and I definitely believe in having people journey and visit and work with the best of the best. And this this event with Scott and Eileen is definitely one it's not a, missed. It's, it's a big, uh, big, big deal. And if you know, and it's hard because you hear about this. Well, I don't know. This is one of those things. Trust me. <laughs> it's a yes. big deal. Sid, are you still practicing? You you doing one-on-one -on -one readings with people? Uh, yes, I do one-on-one -on -one readings. Uh, because I'm a nurse full-time, mm. I don't have a lot. So I'm, I'm booked pretty solid. Um, I do a lot of events. Um, I've got, uh, I do several events of my own. I just like so we just did Relay for Life this weekend. We did another event at a restaurant. Um, we do several events um, at Unity Church, which is a, a church here locally in Metairie. Um, we do a lot of, in fact, we got one on March 11th there at Unity Church. Um, we're going to be in home at the Ramada Inn on, I think, March 22nd. And uh, I do a lot of events with another medium, um, Trenny Simmons. We work as a team. Nice. Uh, and uh, we do a lot of events and connect a lot of people to their loved ones. And I got to tell you, this this last two weeks, lots of children. We've had lots of children coming in. So it's been interesting. This has been more children in this last two weeks than we've ever had, actually. So it's been a lot of kids. This, I don't know what's in the air, but <laughs> we have a, been we've been bringing through a lot of children, a lot of recent passings of children. Mm, that's such a good thing. I have experienced death of my close pets, my grandmother, my father, which was really tough. But I cannot even imagine going to that level of a child or yes. a spouse that we've been married 60 years to really know what it, intense grief it is. So to give someone the faith that that child or that person is still around and maybe in the unseen world, but we can still talk to them, right? Let's let's talk yes, a little bit about. I want you to reach in that beautiful soul of yours and inspire us a little bit. Yes. I yeah. am going to give you a little exercise. I'll take it. Okay. So, um, you know, one thing I like to tell people is um, what we're on a mission to do is try to help you learn to celebrate the life of your loved one, and it's very hard when you're dealing with grief. It's very hard um, to turn that around to a joyous thing. Um, but I mean by what I mean by celebrating is, you know, have that that memory at an event or have a, a positive experience. You know, never, ever let the thought of your loved one ever get away from you. I, to this day, talk to my mother every day since 1988. Oh, that's so, nice. That's great. So for me, for me the, the shower is like a cabinet because when you pull that curtain, you have created a cabinet. So I encourage people that if even if you bathe and you have a shower curtain, pull it. And in and in that space, talk to people. You know, say hello. You know, ask them how their day is, just as if they were there. And just see if you get something back. Have no expectation. But one thing that I've learned from childhood, and when I was a child, I was a latchkey kid. My parents were in the restaurant business, so I never saw them. I was raised by babysitters or my sister. And when I was at this one particular babysitter, I would always go to the door about four o'clock and cry and wait for my mom to, and, or dad to come get me. And I would sit there and cry. And one day this babysitter looked at me and I don't know how metaphysical she was, but she looked at me and she said, Sid, why don't you make a pact with the universe and give you to give you a sign about when your parents are coming? So I thought about it and I said, OK. So I said, whenever I hear a creak in the door, I know my parents are coming. So I built that sign up that I, I, I sat every day and I waited and I said to the door, I want you to creak when my parents come. Then one day, about a, about a few days later, it creaked. And within 10 to 15 minutes, my parents showed up. So then I would listen and play. And whenever I'd hear the creak, I'd go grab my stuff and I'd go to the door. And my parents would show up. It was really crazy. To this day, 
when my door creaks, I know someone's coming over in about 20 minutes. I know to get dressed, clean the house, do things. And it's just a de- it's just it's just a relationship that I built with the universe. So I tell a lot of people when you're lying in bed, right when you wake up or right before you go to sleep and when you're in a hypnotic state, ask for a sign that your loved one's with you, whether it just be a tap on the wall, a light tap on the wall. And see if you get it. And again, have no expectation, but it will come. And then it will start becoming consistent. When you ask for it, it's going to happen. And then I say, because you know me, I'm like you, Sandra. I started out a skeptic. I'm like, now give me three knocks. (laughs) And you know, (laughs) I I got three knocks. I actually got three knocks. So, you know, it's about building that relationship. And that's what's important, that you still communicate with your loved one, that you still put them in your thoughts in your prayers. If you study energy, you know there's two phases, kinetic and potential. But every time you think about your loved ones, you put them in a kinetic phase so they can work. So use those thoughts to be positive, not negative. And that's why I tell people, think of your loved ones in a positive manner. Have small celebrations. Have moments where you spend and you talk to them, just as if they were in the room. Because they do hear me, trust you. Trust me, they hear you. They do hear you. And, and that's, you know, that's one of the simplest things one can do to help relieve some grief. I mean, grief is a process we're all going to go through. You lose your car keys, you're going through grief, okay? Grief is about loss. And it's our, it's, and believe it or not, it is a selfish look. It, it is selfish because it's about my pain, not the person who passed. So I tell people, you know, understand that you have the right to go through your grief but also never forget about the love. And that'll help you get through your grief a little bit faster. Start thinking about the love and mentioning them, mentioning things they've done, going places where y'all might've gone together, you know, um, talking to them daily, you know, asking them to give you a sign if they think about, to say, how you, if you're a woman and you've lost your husband, how do you like my new dress? Can I get a knock? You know what I'm saying? Include yes. them in your life. You know, Scott always says, after class, uh, one of after class, and whatever he says, if y'all do go to the bar, never forget to raise a glass to right. those on the other side. You know, and and, and it, he's right. I mean, because it's it's about honoring them, and it's about remembering the love, not the pain, the love. And for people who feel guilt about passing, please let that go, because that, that that they do not hold that against you. You let that go, and you and you think about the good times, and that you you know any decision you made in their passing was. For the best, and is what with the knowledge you had was the best that you could think of, and mm-hmm. they're never going to hold you accountable for that ever. No, we so do the best we can as human beings. Yes, we do you know, in any moment do. the best we can. So to beat up ourselves for something maybe yes. we should have done if we had the thought to do it differently, we would have. Absolutely, and and that's what I tell people. You know, we start learning to build communication. Simple communication. Uh, you don't don't expect phenomena. If it comes, it comes. But start building little communications, even with your pets. You know, say hello to them. Tell them good morning. You know, ask them was them that put that water spot on the floor. You know, whatever. You know, <laughs> have them. You know, have fun. And this is what's going to start opening communication. When you open that heart and you open those feelings, that's when the spirit can come in and get closer to you. And that's why it's, that's why some mediums have a hard time when someone's in a lot of heavy grief getting through. It's because that wall is so strong that they can't get in there. You know, it takes somebody with many years of experience to actually get in there and mm-hmm. and work with someone who's in that level of grief. So that's what I tell people, you know, just, you know, start learning to little things to celebrate and to remember. You know, the 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 wife who goes over to the picture and kisses the picture every night before she goes. But that's absolutely lovely. There is nothing wrong with that. You know, that is just, you know, adorable, you know. And so I tell people, just pay attention your loved ones are there. And I think too, and I have a funny feeling you'll agree with me, just because somebody passes doesn't mean they have all the answers of the universe. Oh, and, absolutely. And, but if all of a sudden, say, I like that practice of in the shower, because, you know, I do yes. my best thinking in the shower. It's probably because we're tapped into something and we have that cabinet, that energy Absolutely. around us. But when once we start a practice of talking to our loved one, all of a sudden they're like, 
they are listening to me. And they say, oh, okay. And then, you know, maybe you ask for a sign or whatever that may be. But now that there's a relationship and they're saying, they can hear me, they're listening, I'm going to keep trying to put these thoughts in their head, I'm going to try to manifest the rose or whatever that may be. And they become active. I do believe there's some place called the halls of learning or whatever you want to call it on, on the other side to help people learn. But once they realize that you are there communicating, you're open, asking them to step forward. And if you can feel their energy, then they're going to do whatever they can do on their side to, okay, okay, maybe that didn't work today, but let's try it again tomorrow. I totally believe that. So I think that's really good to make it a daily habit. And um, I'll take that on myself. Yes. <laughs> I've got to get clean anyways every day. So uh, yes. so why not? Oh, Sid, it's really great talking with you. Thank you, Sid. It's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure talking with you as well. Yeah. And, and I was just telling Sid before we started recording is I really want to go to the New Orleans event, but it's both my b- mother's birthday and Easter. And in the last three years, every every Easter and every Thanksgiving, I've been going over to the UK to Banyan Retreat. And I just thought, mom's turning 77. And I think... <sighs> You it's, need to be. Yeah. I do because it's as fa- fascinated as I am about the afterlife. It's also about living life. Yes. So, although I won't, may not be at that one, Sid, I know full well that you and I, and probably some others in the United States, were really going to help bridge the. I was going to say two worlds, maybe it's three worlds, but yeah. getting the some of the UK style of mediumship and raising the ethics here in the United States, and then also bringing these extraordinary mediums um, here. And and because once you get touched by, say, Scott Milligan or Eileen Davies, and uh, and you say Christine Morgan is coming over, you've got some good things in the in the works. But once you get a little taste of it, you start getting boy, how real it is. And yes, there are some people out that might not have the education or the training. But when we're talking about the best of the best, evidential medium, Eileen Davies, physical medium, Scott Milligan, they both do trance demonstrations that will blow your mind. And you've got them both under one roof for four days. And I think that's great. So I'll do everything I can to share and also support you and your center uh, from this point going forward. And how do we find your book? Uh, it's Seance, it's called Seance Experiments. It's by uh, Khalil Smith and Sid Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on Amazon. Okay. And it's just, it's just a book about different experiments that we have done with the spirit world and the things we've experienced. Um, and this was pro- a, a space of probably 2014 to 2016 in a two year period. And so that, it's just all the different things we've done. Um, you'll hear events of things that happened during table. You'll hear table tipping. You'll hear things that happened in seance. We couldn't mention a lot of, we had to change names because we didn't have, you know, we have to have um, approval for using anybody's right. names. But all the things you read about in the book are actual, and they're very. All of them have happened, mm, and it's just it. we've changed some of the names because of uh, you know just to protect people's privacy. Great, and your website? I know I said it's, it in the beginning, but yes, sid patrickcom Excellent, and then sid patrickcom forward slash touching eternity for the the course with Scott and Eileen. Um, is there anything I missed, or any closing words, or any last minute things you want to? Um, Say just, before we say thank our listener. Yes, you know I'm just I'm, I just want to welcome the welcome the listeners to the spirit world because it's such a phenomenal place and to be able to try to reach them daily and to work with them has been a blessing in my life and I hope that everyone is gets blessed with those experiences and opens up just a little bit. You know, my main goal in life, and that's what, when people ask me, why do you do this? Why do you teach? Why do you have a center? Why do you? do what you do. I said, because my mission in this life is if I can just raise the consciousness of one person just a little bit, mm-hmm. I feel I've done my job. That's beautiful. And just, you know, what we're doing too, is we're all going to be in that spirit world at some point, but why rush it? Why not get our money's worth out of life right now and experience everything we can while we have all the senses that we have and as great as the afterlife may be, I do think it's going to be a little different. And um, 
why not utilize our taste buds and our hugs and our hearing with music and, and all those things while we're here now. And I always like the quote that our lifetime is but a thread of the fabric of our soul. So there's a bigger picture, but while we're here, oh, just go for it and playful out and yeah, and learn. Um, yeah. And anytime our soul can get touched witnessing what seems like the impossible, I think it, it, it really impacts the quality of our life. And I know yes. that you offer that in so many ways. So thank you, Sid. Oh, thank you, Sandra. It's this been great. Fun. It goes by fast. And for our listener, thank you for being our guest here today. Believe it or not, this is episode 303, which is crazy. But all, all of these episodes are available on wedontdieradio.com. They're also on YouTube. And the last 100 of them are on iTunes and iHeartRadio and Stitcher and Spreaker and all different places. But if you go to wedontdieradio.com, you can join what I call my insiders club. It's just my email list. But there's a free copy of my book, We Don't Die Radio, that you can read in PDF format. I've got an audio called How to Survive Grief, because I do realize that most of us get into this conversation because of the loss of a loved one. And certainly my condolences if you're there now, but how to survive grief really helps with giving some tools to help alleviate the pain and understand grief. Um, what else do I want to say? Uh, there is an upcoming We Don't Die event coming up in Orlando, which will be the month prior to Sid's event. And it's not just physical mediumship. We've got um, Sonia Rinaldi coming from Brazil, talking about and showing a great demonstration of all the pictures and videos and uh, sounds and words she's gotten from people in the afterlife and a whole panel of speakers of so many varied reasons to believe in the afterlife, help through grief and then help living life. And certainly we are going to have some seances available if that's something you're interested in outside of the course uh, and workshops and things like that. So that's at wedontdieorlando.com. I can't recommend enough going to this event in New Orleans, though, Touching Eternity. Your life will be forever changed. That I can absolutely guarantee. So sidpatrick.com forward slash touching eternity. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. And you know, I love being your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important. Take some time daily or as much as you can, whether it's in the shower or make a habit of reconnecting with your loved ones. They are there in that invisible space around us. We can't see the wireless internet or television signals or radio waves or GPS signals. They're very real. It, it is very real that your loved one is standing by your side right now. I want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon. <laughs>